Good morning. Um, give me a second to share my screen and then I'll speak about it. So when we are talking about upskilling is the way or MBA 2022, what all can you expect? I hope my screen is visible now. Yep. Uh, I let me introduce myself very quickly. I happen to be the in charge of PGDM currently at IMT Gazabad. So I'll be your touch point for most of your things. And hence, uh, I'll talk about what you can expect in IMT or otherwise in 2020. So we are going to talk about MBA journey to 2022 challenges and opportunity. And I'll prefer to say that I want to talk about future proofing by upskilling. So this is what whatever you are planning to have in current situations where we are talking about 2020. We have seen so many changes in life and lifestyle in last six months. I'll not even say three months because this Corona and COVID was um, on our head since January itself. We are talking about survival of the fittest, which is true in every phase of life, right? It, it's a theory which was given many, many years ago. And it's true in every phase. We are saying stay home, stay safe. What does it mean for us? So we are going to be, and on top of that, nowadays we are facing movement control orders. So when you're talking about movement control orders, how are you seeing your life? And again, I'll take it back that in under both stay home, stay safe option or movement control orders, it's the survival of the fittest if you want to future-proof yourself in every sense, and starting from your career to your life, to your family life. This is the life is looking like to us nowadays. So we are studying, sitting at home, we are working, sitting at home, we are interacting, sitting at home, and we are at this webinar sitting at our homes. So 110 people in 110 locations and interacting with each other. You are saying need for upskilling scenarios. Labor market is poised to be transformed and usher in a talent economy. And hence, you have to now talk about the talent economy. That's the only way to survive. You have to learning and upskilling is the only way to raise your bills. And Capgemini report says that if upskilling has the potential to save about 1.2 billion over three years time. So here is a new word for us. And when you're talking about it, we'll have two views. So one is external view for which we have two of our LMs here who are also going to give you some of the external view, the industrial view. And Hello. the internal... Sorry? Oh, sorry. Three yeah. of us. Three of us. <laughs> Three of you. Uh, but... <laughs> I'm sorry, Alika. Uh, but there are people giving you the external view and then some of us will also give you the internal view. And an internal view, again, I'll say three, four, because Alekia is also going to give you internal and external and recent time and uh, all of you, I mean. So when I say external view, I'll like to put forth, uh, this is the shield which we achieved last year. So these are the some of the competitions which our student won in 29-20 in 19 and 20 year. So last year we were everywhere. The students ones, Mahindra War Room, to Flipkart, to Americas, to Nestle, to Flips, and uh, even reached to international level. And I'll perhaps, uh, I don't know whether I should quote or not, but then still let me take the name of uh, the team of Vijeta Party and Rahul and five of them, who even won the PepsiCo and uh, are visiting US. So, uh, and through this, through these competitions where they showed that they are the one, the chosen one. They won the competitions and the companies chose them immediately. They are the glimpse or the, as I said, the, 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 um, the merit for us. Now, when I say about the internal view, for every program which we offer, we define very clear cut learning objectives. And if you see the three objectives which we have for your MBA, 
It's your developing your core managerial competencies in Indian and global context, developing sensitivity towards social responsibility and sustainability of business, and developing strategic and innovative thinking in creating and managing businesses. And you can see all these three are there, and all these three are so relevant in today's world. Again, another internal view, who we are. We are an excellent teaching institute. How do we perform this? We do it by world class academic processes. We have cutting edge curriculum, which we keep on revising and depending upon our uh, revisions, which we get the feedback from the industry, from students, from faculty, from visiting faculty. So overall 360 degree review process leads us towards the cutting edge curriculum. Whenever required, we introduce new courses or 20% change of the courses, which we also refer as Nataraja, because Nataraja's dance steps are keeps on changing. And then when required, we change the program. For example, you are going to uh, go through a program which is absolutely changed now this year, where we are moving back from term to the trimester system. And then we have rich intellectual capital in terms of faculty, industry, experts, alums, and most important, you yourself. You are our intellectual capital in every way possible. What we stand for, we stand for, or whatever we do, we follow the three steps. We follow the innovation, engagement, and keep on measuring what is the impact of it for us. So, as I said, periodic change in program, cutting edge courses, we offer design thinking not today, but back 2015 when really any college was offering in India cross-functional simulation. So at the end of the one year, you are actually running a company in terms of simulations in the groups where you are uh, marketing head, finance head, uh, CEO, CEO, and everything. Negotiation is still so important. You must have read some of the reports which the uh, newspapers or the media keeps on telling that within five to 10 years, whatever your hard skills are going to go away because most of the roles will be taken over by perhaps the robots and the AIs and all. But what you need to have is certain things which these robots cannot take away. Negotiation of skills or design thinking or cross-functional simulations or sensitivity towards the society, et cetera, some of them. SSR we introduced back in 2016 and in 2017, it gave us the UN recognition. So UN recognized IMT for its social work. We offered business analytics back in 2012. We have started it with GenPAC. We have a lab established by, by GenPAC back in 2012 and 13, when India was not even talking about it. And now we are not exactly working with GenPAC, but we have well developed analytics lab where we offer starting from AI to blockchains to any such kind of courses. And today's word again, the people are talking about that in this COVID, how the logistics is working, how the supply chain is working. And we offered supply chain major back since 2016. Engagement back student driven clubs and committees. So sometimes the student says that IMT is driven by students and IMT is led by students and I fully agree to it. They are the ones for us. We are preparing the managers, so they need to take and they need to showcase it since beginning. So it's clubs committees where they decide what kind of events they want to plan and we just support them. Real life projects entrepreneurship club and incubation center. We started entrepreneurship club back in 2008-9. An incubation center was inaugurated in 2011 by none other than Mr. Nanda Nilkani and uh, Mr. Kamal Nath himself. And hence through this, whenever the student comes in and says that we want to work on our ideas, we say here is your platform. So two years, you are here, you test yourself. If you are successful, good enough. If you want to go back to the corporate taking a job, you're that option is also open to you. Leadership series, which keeps on happening, and focus on overall development. So, who you will be in 2022? Some of the traits and IMT and display, I'll say effective soft skills, ethical and legal understanding, reasoning abilities, analytic and logic, logical thinking skills, Technocybe capabilities to manage integrated environment, understanding diversity in Indian and global context, corporate social responsibilities and SSR, 
entrepreneurship skill, and most important, the leadership. And if you see what, whatever I'm saying, program outcome, it's actually defined because you know we are AACSB accredited. So our every course, every program, as an institute, we define our goals and planning objectives, and we measure with that. Our courses are aligned to this. So we expect you will be this, all of this, and most important, the leader. So I'll say that upskilling is the answer, and that's where I take a pause. Over to you, Dr. Patnaik. Sorry, uh, I was muted. I realized that very quickly now. Okay, thank you for uh, the quick presentation, uh, Dr. Mandani. Uh, just stop sharing your screen so that we can see each other better, and we do. So uh, I'm now, about to do that. Yeah. Yes. So now, okay? um, yeah. who is next? Uh, please volunteer yourself, Alakya, Aditi, anyone. <laughs> so, Maroj, you want to do it or? Uh, Who's gonna come I first? can't even say I can't even say go alphabetically. All three of our names come starts with A. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. a, so the family, family name decides. A, a, yeah, family name. Family yeah. name yeah. decides. Perhaps Aditi then in that case. No. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll. Yeah, I'll go please. next. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just build on a lot with uh, Dr. Mrinalini said. I think she started out by saying it's about survival of the fittest. Yes, it is. It has always been. Uh, I'll just add on to say that uh, when you choose a course like IMT Ghazibad, an institute like IMT Ghazibad, you're just not choosing it for mere survival. You are choosing it to win and to win over the competition, to win in the long run. And to win in the long run, I think more than anything else, what you need is to differentiate yourself. Um, there is a right step that all of the students have taken by investing two years into themselves, a long term investment, which will always pay off throughout their lives. Uh, but it's also important to take this as one of the very critical differentiation steps in their journeys and to see how the next two years they can actually use to continue to differentiate their to stand apart and to add to their personal narratives so that tomorrow whether you are wanting to do an entrepreneurship getting into entrepreneurship or you want to get into a corporate you have your own personal brand and you have your own personal story and there are there are so many things that dr Mrinalini spoke about uh, of how you can enrich yourself on the campus how you can add to yourself uh, and really create yourself as a differentiated story, as a brand that someone would want to, to take you over the others. I think that's one point that I wanted to make. Uh, the other point that uh, that, that ma'am made was that these are tough times, these are unprecedented times. A lot of people say that this is the black swan event of the century. Yes, it is all of that. Uh, but you know, businesses are cyclical. I remember I passed out in 2007 from IMT Ghaziabad. And uh, I remember 2009 is when Lehman Brothers crashed. And that was a particularly bad time for people who were graduating in, the, in that year, plus maybe a year after that, if I remember correctly. 2008, nine is when Lehman Brothers crashed. But if you, and, and as strenuous and as stressful, I can imagine that time was for those people. Um, yep. Now, 10 years later, if you look at them, I'm sure most of them are very well settled, are doing excellently well in their careers because, you know, there are minor setbacks, businesses go down and businesses come up, economies are cyclical. But if you invest in yourself and if you continue to differentiate yourself and if you continue to add on to yourself, you will always come out of those times stronger, better, uh, you know, more resilient than the others. And that's really the only way because economies will keep going up and down. Uh, businesses will keep going up and down. But I mean, you build yourself for the future. You build yourself for life innings. Don't build yourself for a job uh, and do the right things. The first step has already been taken. Maximize your two years on campus. Uh, be part of as many committees as you can. 
uh, get as much exposure as you can build the out the communication and leadership skills that are extremely critical. Those are life saving skills. Uh, invest that time into building yourself out. Uh, and that's really what you know, what differentiates you and prepares you for the longer innings. Uh, one last point, I think uh, Dr. Mnalani also um, touched upon the point that there is AI and robots are taking over, etc. And that's while that is true, uh, there is a lot of automation, there are robots taking over our jobs, etc. But I think one skill which sets humans apart and something that robots can never do is creativity and imagination. And if you invest in out of the box thinking, creativity, imagination, that's what is going to differentiate the leaders of tomorrow from the others. I'll just hand over. I had these initial points to make. Uh, anybody who wants to go over next, I'll just hand over the mic now. So uh, thank you, Aditi. Uh, Alec or Anurag, anyone? Uh, who want to come first? I mean, both of you. May I go first? Please do. Yes, Please yes, do. Yes, sir. Thank you. So there are a very wide range of points brought out by the two ladies. And uh, it's a very interesting, now this story is getting to be a very interesting set of discussions here because the topics are extremely have, have gone from internal to external in such a wide scope i mean it becomes very difficult but let me just try and put all these thoughts together along with my experiences in terms of what we can expect in 2022 from this course and what we should be looking for from this course if you think about imt i mean i have a graduate of the 1994 class Right, so that takes me back really long ago, and we just did our 25th uh, anniversary uh, reunion celebrations in December last year. The spirit of entrepreneurship that IMT has fostered in us, even since back then, and, and I'm very happy to see the progress that has been systematically made in the last uh, decade or so in terms of bringing it up to the speed that it is now required, is the, really the game changer, if you ask me. This is not just a course, you know, where you come in and as Aditi said also at, at some point, you don't just come in for a class, you don't just come in to attend a session, you actually come in to develop your own self as an entrepreneur. And I think that is the biggest takeaway that has been for me as an ad IMT. One of the concepts, and this got nothing to do with COVID, it's got, it's a more permanent concept and which is gaining a lot of scope in the uh, industry today. I mean, it's a, it's a buzzword now, but I think it's a practice that we should all follow is that of entrepreneurship. Now, entrepreneurship basically means taking charge of whatever you are doing as if you own that enterprise. Now, if you own that enterprise and then you are responsible for its, you know, balance sheet, and you're responsible for its PL, and you're responsible for the people who are working with you, you have internal and external stakeholders and everybody. And that is the thinking which essentially is something which you'll have to bring into the game. And that is exactly what the courses, what uh, Dr. Murali spoke about, prepare you for. When, you, when she spoke about the learning objectives, those are exactly the learning objectives are essentially designed to help the students get into that mode. Once you're in the entrepreneurship mode, then you are obviously looking at leadership. You cannot be an entrepreneur without being a leader. And when people spoke about IMT inculcating the values of leadership, this is where it comes from because they start, the process starts with inculcating the values of entrepreneurship. Now, the uh, innovation lab that Dr. Shah spoke about is a very good step in that direction. And I would say that, so I think one of the, I think we are if the only, if not, if not the only, one of the very few institutes who actually fostered this kind of a development in the place. And speaking of COVID, so COVID, if you ask me, frankly, in my experience, has only accelerated certain thoughts and ideas that might have otherwise taken a longer time to fruition. Yeah. And one of the things that it has accelerated is the whole concept of business administration, if you ask me, you know. So at one point in time, back in my day, you could call it and you could practice what was called business administration. Today, you don't. Today, in my view, you practice something what is called an ecosystem leadership. What does that mean? So you are essentially, whatever you're doing in your job, you are essentially a part of an ecosystem and thanks to the connectivity and that connectivity is going to stay. We are talking about deglobalization, but you ask me that connectivity is going to stay. Stay. Your ecosystem is connected with a lot of ecosystems internally, externally, everywhere in the, in the, in the organization, outside the organization. And how do you lead that ecosystem? How do you take that ecosystem to be the cutting edge 
to be the leading edge is where you will find your success. It's more about ecosystem leadership now than about business administration as it used to be 25 years ago. And that is a critical thought, which basically it's my knowledge distinguishes IMT as a learning center for this particular course. And that is one of the reasons. And we and when we look for hires, and we have recently started, we recently visited the IMT campus. And uh, I happened to see the reaction of the, you know, my fellow uh, colleagues from HR. And they were very pleasantly surprised to see the fire and the determination in the students that they found at IMT. And the reason for this fire, the reason for this was that you constantly kept on your toes, you're constantly kept in the practical mode of being a manager, more than you know, just being fed with some certain set of classes or assignments or exercises to be done. And that is what sets the trend. That is what you know sets IMT apart. And that is what I would actually encourage everybody in these next two years to be able to do to become a leader. Robotics will come in, yes, AI will come in, yes, but those robotics and AI are essentially again going to be leading you to a very different set of leadership challenges. So I was speaking with my cousin in the US and he was talking about the concept of digital workers that has been there for a while now. And uh, these digital workers, they do a lot of manual work. You know? But those digital workers, he was telling me very interestingly, are treated almost as humans. So you have a day that celebrates their birthday. Of course, they can't cut a cake. Okay? And uh, you have uh, their achievements and you are supposed to be managing a set of digital workers also. So AI is going to be bringing up very new challenges in leadership as we go along. You will not just manage human beings. You will not just negotiate with human beings. You will also manage digital workers. And then you will negotiate human beings in terms of managing those digital workers as you go along. So these are the... So these are a few thoughts to start with from my side, and we can go along as we go along. I'm sure you have a lot more to say on this. Okay. Uh, no, the, the great hearing um, both of you professors and and, and Aditi and Anurag sir as well. Uh, so I'm Alekia, I'm from the 2010 batch. Uh, uh, very happily about three months back, uh, I was planning the 10 year union of my batch uh, back in IMT and here we are, right? Uh, talking on uh, online, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. And 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 when I heard uh, the request, you know, to kind of address you, the, the, the incoming batches as to what will MBA in 2020 look like, I, I thought I don't know how my ecosystem will look six months down the line forget about me projecting or being a soothsayer about how 2022 will look uh, so let me not kid you uh, any of you there I, I think very few people have any idea how things are going to be in the next one or two years uh, and that's the absolute brutal on and learned over the years uh, in IMT and beyond that uh, honesty pays off the most. So that's what I'll try to be. I'll largely touch upon two points and, and you know, mostly chipping off from points what I heard earlier. I was taking copious notes. And, and uh, on, on number one, what I think are the fluxes that we are going through as a generation, as, as professionals, and uh, what you, the future professionals who will join in the system ecosystem as well, what they are possibly going to go through. And second, the difference that IMT brings in, right? So maybe a couple of points on that from my personal point of view and the first one i think in terms of the flux uh like Anurag so mentioned, a uh, lot of things were already happening. They have just been accelerated, period. That's it. So, so it's, it's happening big faster. Uh, I, Touchwood, happen to be currently in a business which is, in fact, seeing a lot of tailwinds. Uh, I sell milk. So obviously, you can guess it's an essential service. So company is that, and then as we Life is that this is the time you know overconfident and arrogant because we are the one of the chosen few categories businesses harder so uh, and and take up the responsibility take up the mantle and that is the exact thing I want to tell all of you because uh, the. MBA experience right now, and like Aditi mentioned, uh, uh, I was at the receiving end of that particular time, I'm 2010 batch, I mean, that's when the recession was happening. And I remember we were completely like shocked, ki, hamare saathi kyun ho rahi hai? Hamare time mein, like MBA kitna achche se, malo, hum dream leke jane wale the MBA mein, uh, you know, that dream profile, the dream job in those two, three dream companies that we want to join in. And hamare saathi ye hoa, in, in, you know, once in a two, three uh, century kind of a thing. Uh, and I know what you guys are also thinking. It's very Similar. But at that point, 
time uh, i kept on hearing one line which i think i want to echo back to all of you a uh, lot of people lot of websites back then you know mentors like that i spoke to they said that this is the best time to get into an mba to to upskill yourself which is the word that you i think heard again and again and i want to tell you guys the same thing possibly it's a golden opportunity to spend 22 months really polishing your skill sets becoming that absolutely polished diamond from the raw uncut diamonds that you guys are and and possibly no better place than imt uh, and why do i say that i'll tell you what i did when i 5 6 days back i i i got the request to address you guys on this like i have always done during my classes as well i simply ask my classmates on my whatsapp group like kya bolu kya in logo ja ke and 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 you can't even imagine what happened in the next half an hour i started noting down the stuff that he well forget about me sharing it with other people those were notes for me as as valuable as they were and, and so i think two three pointers that they mentioned one was of course the need to uh, you know go beyond uh, generalization and go for specific knowledge building yeah and i cannot underline this as you know as, as much as possible you know, enough so this is so important like for example i am in marketing i am in fmcg marketing possibly one of the how do i put it the the rules of the game in fmcg marketing have been the same over you know decades but even then uh, i feel the need every day to upskill myself for example i give you a specific example i am seeing my sales in e-commerce uh, shoot day by day if not week by week if not month by month so i have to find out newer and better ways to sell my basic product which is milk on e-commerce fully and i'm figuring out ways to learn stuff from the e-tellers from you know the best practices that i can figure out even from outside of mcg every day and and uh, think about you know people like let's say anurag sir i was having a chat with him yesterday he was saying if you are feeling the need to upskill imagine me with 25 years of experience i am also doing an get in place like mt which is one of the best b schools in the country by a uh, you should go even beyond what is the course even beyond what what for example professor shah told you which is already a great part great part so the have to figure out ways which which with which you can build a niche for yourself in the industry that you want to join in later on because trust me it was always important to tell your own story to create a niche for ourselves in the market it's even more important now Pe- people are going to be hungrier people are going to be hungrier for the same set of jobs which are going to be limited and i am again going to be brutally honest with you you need to be really really after that to keep on you know upskilling yourself second um, and this is a great line of batchmate of mine wrote it and i wrote it down for myself uh, right uh, and and, and I'll, I'll i'll just quote him literally his name is saurav sina he mentioned this that uh, write down your set of goals but with a pencil right not with a pen because you have to keep on sketching uh, you know the kind of erasing them and keep on uh, you know writing new goals this was a brilliant line and and, and we were all like saying wow wow kya bol diya and all but i genuinely want to you know share it out to all of you guys and i cannot tell you how important this is again why because for example i for myself let's say for my own brand for myself for my own career building perspective i'm setting a certain you know 3 month 6 month 12 month 18 month road map for myself what i want to do what i want to learn on the job what i want to learn from trainings what i want to learn from other industries to keep on reinventing myself and kind of reset my goal and then go after them i want to tell you guys to do the same thing whether it be the 22 months in the mba experience or beyond uh, keep setting your goals keep them like temporary keep keep revisiting them is it okay is it relevant in the in, in the times of today do i need to do something else to within this goal to kind of make my own uh, self a little better differentiated self out there right and the third point i want to say within the experience of imt is the importance of friends and networking mba in my head the biggest and you know the biggest re- that anyone can get out of a great 22 month mba experience is the networking that one gets from this uh, you know own uh, peers around them the senior batch and the batch that they are part of as also the alumni network and imt by far has possibly the one of the best alumni networks in the country and i say that with a uh, lot of confidence being the part of alumni relationship committee during my student days and and still being in touch with uh, and and humbly being in touch with a lot of senior alumni who i absolutely learn a lot of great stuff still now so i think a place like imt gives you a lot of you know for example stuff that you heard from aditi and anurag sir right now um, i don't know what i am talking about but yeah i think some stuff that you can see and you can learn a lot of things uh, in the you know how do i put it the uncertain times that it's going to be there for some time now so an alumni network there the peer group that you will get in a place like imt is of absolute importance so uh, these i, I think those are the two three points i'll share first up before we get in kind of 
more open discussion. Uh, so one, the, the flux is here to stay. Second, uh, write your goals, but with a pencil, not a pen. Keep keep changing them as you go along. And then third, uh, yeah, the importance of friends uh, and, and networking and alumni in a place like IMT. Yeah? So these are the three key points I want to land. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful, Alex. Uh, Adhurag, Aditi, uh, Rinalini, you made wonderful points. Uh, is it my time to speak or can we take questions? Obviously, your time to speak now. <laughs> I should be, okay. <laughs> um, in fact, let me share this with uh, all the uh, prospect applicants of MBA. It's a journey that is going to be a very unique journey for all of you. Uh, this is a batch perhaps will be known in the history as the COVID batch. Okay, <laughs> not a great epithet or a name, but yes, this batch is a batch which is going to be a lot more resilient than the other batches. That is what we all feel. Now, uh, we learn from our children much more than our elders. Okay, elders have given up on us, so we learn from our children. We look the other way. Okay. Now, if you really look at, uh, you know, what do you want to be? A kind of a question that is usually asked in a school. And what I mean is, is a primary school, not a business school, is you ask a five-year-old, what do you want to be? You would say, I want to be a truck driver. I want to be a pilot. I want to be a train driver. Those things are quite cool. The moment you uh, shift that uh, question 10 years then, uh, perhaps to a teenager of 15, the teenager would say perhaps he would want to be an astronaut, perhaps a doctor, perhaps, a, perhaps an engineer. And you move 10 years a little bit more, not necessarily 10 years, but in the early 20s. Now you ask the same question, suddenly the answer changes to, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a CEO. Some of them are very clear, I want to be rich. Now let us be very honest, what is it we are aiming at? Now, uh, Alakya said, write whatever you want to be, your career in a pencil. Well, that is what has been happening all the while without us knowing it. We have been doing this and eventually forgetting what we started off with. Uh, something which is very crucial, uh, I want to be rich, I want to be a CEO, I want to be this, I want to be an achiever. Why? Because I want to be a superhero. I want to be a superhero in the eyes of my nephew or my niece or my parents or my friends. So MBA is basically a way to actually help you achieve that superhero status. Now, coming to this, you must have actually seen a lot of Marvel movies. During our time, it was Marvel comics and DC comics we went through, and now we see movies. We have the whole universe of Marvel, and now we also have DC. Okay. Now, think about it. Marvel, we have uh, all the super characters, all the superheroes having one thing or the other, which is a superpower. And then you have DC, where you have Batman, Superman, they have superpowers as well. Batman, not so much, but yes, he has the money, all right. Now think about it, what do you want to be? You want to be a superhero in the Marvel universe, or you want to be a superhero in a Batman or a Superman movie? Why I'm saying this is, think about it. Batman, Superman usually would have an enemy, which is, or a nemesis, which is, one person or perhaps two in marvel it is not one or two perhaps it's many more so they have to join hands build strength and do something bigger now here in an mba college in an mba institution we expect that kind of teamwork to come in we celebrate diversity we celebrate your superpowers you come in here you create things you join hands build on each other's strengths and achieve bigger things in life. That's what we want. And topic of today's discussion, challenges and opportunities. Actually for us, challenges are opportunities. The moment people are challenged, the moment a team is challenged, we create enough in our IMTNs that they take it as an opportunity that it's an opportunity for them to do better than the competitors when they could. So this is what I am to do this to you. Now, uh, what do you want to be? What do you want to create? Why do you want to be a superhero? You want to be a superhero because at some level you want to create value, something which is 
uh, kind of indelible. It's, it's not easy to, you know, just wipe it off. Okay. Now, value, we have been telling every student of ours that it's a two-way street at the firm level. It's for the organization, it's for the customers. But we never tell them that, hang on, this value is also at a personal level. It's what you do to your team, what you do to your friends, and what they do to you back in return, and also to yourself. How does this particular value changes you? makes you a better person now what COVID has given us is a platform to think a platform to reflect a, a platform to create a point of view i don't mean point of view is opinions opinions you'll find on a social media every now and then but that's not necessarily a point of view a point of view is much deeper COVID has allowed each one to have a very deep point of view plus it has also allowed us to shift our point of views and solve problems. So these are the things that COVID has given us. We should take it as an opportunity, move on, do bigger things in life, and achieve success. So really, uh, I think my time is up. I spoke more than required. So let's quickly have the question and answers. I can see some chats. Uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, all the uh, participants here are requested to post all your questions on chat so that we can take it up and we'll try to answer the maximum questions. And uh, there are certain questions that I will be uh, taking it at putting in certain separate buckets. Let's say I have an internship bucket where all the questions on internship will put it there. I have placement bucket, that kind of a thing. So uh, the first question I see is, um, and this is uh, something where I need the help from our alumni much more, is what are the things that the students should achieve themselves before uh, they're absolutely certain they got the right internship to build their team? So yeah, anyone can answer. Uh, like, uh, I, I didn't get the last part. What, what did you say? Uh, what are the things that the student should equip? To get a great internship okay, so that it builds a career. Okay. Anurag, uh, Alekhe, Aditi, anyone? Uh, yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll take that quickly because uh, sure. literally sure. two days back this week, I, I finished, uh, you know, the, the, the final. I mean, I, I just, just my summer intern for this. Uh, and uh, she was from one of the IIMs. Uh, she just uh, finished her internship after having um, worked under uh, in my team. I'll, and in fact, yeah, so this was the, the, the I mean, like so mentioned, this, you guys are going to be the COVID badge. I think the COVID badge uh, is also the 2021 badge because they did their complete internship remotely with us. And, and this uh, kid, for example, I'll tell you what she did. And she, I think she did a brilliant job because a lot of things that we are struggling to do, um, you know, uh, in, our, in our daily life, in spite of our years of experience, uh, like the, we, we entrusted her to do remotely and still she managed to do uh, with aplomb and she was a fresher. So and, and let me just see what all things that she equipped her with to answer your question and relate back to the question. And I think that can be a live example, which I can share back with all of you. Uh, I think she did a great job of being open to more and more challenges. Her, her, her project, the initial brief, which I had given her the scope was only, let's say, two things, X plus Y. And, and, and when I got the in the first uh, 10, 15 days, good confidence that she was going to deliver more, I gave her, I kind of gave her more tasks and she was very open to it. And, 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 and she took it up and she delivered completely on them. So I think that one bit I would like to tell you guys as an attitude uh, that you, you need to um like you are hearing, like AI is going to become more and more uh, prevalent in all industries. So we have to be able to um, open in taking up more, which is what I saw this kid take up more. And that someone like her is definitely going to be very well equipped going ahead. So that's one thing. That's one thing I wanted to definitely land with all of you, the ability to take in more and more. Second, be like a sponge. Okay, my love, whatever you hear, whatever you list, any mail, any word that you see, that you hear, any conflict that you are facing without being perturbed, how how are you being how are you going ahead, you know, in managing that out in the workplace during your internship? And and which sort of internships are gonna give you 
that sort of a uh, you know con conflicting atmosphere from where you can get those learnings uh, so so that's going to be very important for you like so become a sponge uh, be open to absorbing anything and everything that's around you never know what's going to become extremely relevant years down the line uh, in a completely new context some of the things that i had done in some of my past jobs are coming back to me now as as learnings which i'm having to deploy now personally so similarly uh, you know during internships figure out ways to you know not negate any sort of learning that's coming in here so those are the two points i think i want to you you to equip you with one uh, having an attitude to take in more responsibilities and and you know going ahead and doing that and second uh, definitely uh, the ability to becoming uh, the, the attitude to, you know being a sponge to kind of imbibe everything and getting some learning out of whatever is being thrown at you yeah this too anurag uh, anything to add on this on intention uh, please unmute yourself yeah sorry so yeah to two points from my side to add on to what alex said so when he spoke about you know being a sponge it's not just in terms of the technical knowledge that you be a sponge it's also in your overall ability to be able to absorb yourself into the culture of the organization that you are getting that internship in every organization has a has a very different culture mostly you might from outside they all look the same from but from inside they are very different in terms of the way they work the proper from the protocols the hierarchies the attitudes toward towards the colleagues and everything you need to be equipped yourself in terms of two things number one in terms of just putting away whatever you have thought of your past organization if you have any work experience earlier or what is your imagination of the organization trying to absorb in terms of the next two or three months what is this organization all about how does it operate how does it function what is the ecosystem try to do a lot of in learning on your own on that your mentors your who are who are with you at imt and the people who who you are interning with are going to be a great help in this the second what you need to be absolutely uh, i mean this is something which i have not found fortunately in iipt students but i have seen in some other students is that you need to especially when you when you are an intern you need to know that you're going to be noticed a whole lot of people are going to be noticing what you are doing because you're new to them so it's extremely critical that we that you have a sense of you know uh, a very strong sense sense and of the fact that you're representing the institute called imt so you need to be completely well groomed completely you know sharp on the uptake all of those attributes that you attribute that you exhibited at the time of your interview and your gd and exactly those things is what we want to see as an intern when we take the one on board the third in addition to what alika said in terms of absorbing in terms of taking on more and more is basically you we expect you to sort of you know like i always say this phrase you know think like your boss and work like your junior so what does it mean it means work twice as hard as what you might think you want to do but but keep on thinking strategically the way your boss would think you know so if your boss is saying this is what i want to be done why does he say that is that he wants it to be done put some thought about it discuss it with him it makes for a much better internship experience aditi yeah i think uh, both alakhe and anurag covered a lot of ground um from my personal experience i will and a lot of behavioral traits that they spoke about that you need to develop i think from now to to the next 12 months before you guys enter your internship or start preparing for internship you have this unique opportunity of really really developing yourself uh exposing yourself being part of as many things on and off campus that you can be so that you differentiate yourself when the companies come or come to the campus to select remember they are looking at various candidates all of them are very high caliber they are all your batchmates and uh, therefore how do you bring something different to the table than others that catches their attention differentiates you from the very high caliber uh, crowd which is already there so very small personal example i have an intern with me from fms Uh, who's doing an internship under me in marketing uh, there were three people there were a bunch of uh, cvs that came from fms we shortlisted three cvs which we thought were more fit for um, uh, for a uh, for a internship in marketing and the, finally the one that we selected and we had only one place was somebody who was an international champion in rowing uh something that you don't see so often had done courses in from an academy on things like design thinking 
on things like advanced Google analytics, attribution, marketing, etc. So there is a regular curriculum, yes, but then there are embellishments that you can go after and you can develop yourself more and differentiate yourself from the very high caliber crowd that you are with. Your frame of reference has changed. You are in a place where everybody is very high caliber, very well talented and really pushing themselves. Where do you want to take yourself? How do you want to push the limits and create a narrative for yourself, which is very differentiated even to the future employer, be it internship or, uh, you know, be it, uh, be it your final job. And one last point, when you're sitting for placements, whether internship or final placements, uh, make a list of the sectors and the companies that are in that you are interested in read up about the sector and read up about the particular organization. If you're going for a marketing internship, think what are the challenges the marketing team might be facing or what are the opportunities that may lie ahead of them? A little bit of context, a little bit of reflection, a little bit of thinking. You can have a far more meaningful conversation when they are interviewing you and you can up your chances of actually landing that internship. Uh, I'll just add something, um, Professor, after listening to Aditya and Anurag, and it's remarkable if all of you heard, we, three of us are in different uh, industries altogether, all telecom and, and you know, FMCG and finance. Yes, yes. Hello? Are you there? Are you there? Okay, I think uh, yeah, yeah, sure. uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm back. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think what I was trying to say that uh, none of uh, where you know about co commenting on any skills which was functional, like we could have told you that you know, FMCG, you think of soaps, etc., six piece, four piece, per kiao, or something like you know, finance, may PNL, per kiao, balance sheet. We did not, we, we kept on talking about the attitude, uh, in, in the con and you know, the willingness to take up more right responsibilities. So, because understand this very clearly, functional skills beyond the point is just one YouTube tutorial away. Right to the, in today's time, so that's hygiene. That's hygiene Th that you have to do. I'm not. I'm, none of us are saying that. Wo karna nahi hai. Wo equip karna nahi hai aapko. Wo to karna hai hi. Uske upar, the differentiation that you need to bring in as a you know MBA going at is gonna be behavioral always, attitudinal always, which is what you know like like across our different levels of experience, we were also tracking with our interns, and we have been doing. We have been also been judged on the same lines, and that that's gonna not gonna change. That's gonna become even more important going ahead. So so I mean, Aditi Anurag sir. Please pitch in on this uh, on this observation. I, I realize none of us I actually agree. talked about anything functional. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm glad you actually raised this because that is usually the response that students normally would have in their mind. Uh, I have an interesting question here. It's given by someone because I somehow very uh, foolishly have uh, given an epithet of a COVID batch. Okay. Now this person is writing. Our batch has been known as COVID batch. So won't it affect us in the longer run? Why should someone prefer me over others in my, considering my MBA studies are going to be online and hybrid and those kind of things? Okay, uh, very quick, uh, uh, I mean, uh, coming from my side, I have seen the batch uh, during 2008 in the US, uh, especially when uh, they actually suffered through a recession. Okay, the whole batch found it very difficult to, uh, you know, find their bearings right. But that batch is not called as the recession batch. Come on. I mean, we are not going to definitely call you the COVID batch. But yes, one thing is certain. Uh, this COVID has, like I said, it's an opportunity. It's a challenge, but it is an opportunity even for us business schools. What we have done is we have kept the flexibility intact. The flexibility is the key we realized. It's not that, uh, you know, having a scenario planning done and, uh, you know, forecasting the future. That's not the way. We realized very quickly that, hang on, we have to have all the three modes of our learning and teaching and learning in place. If we are forced to by the government, if the situation is that, we have to go completely online. If required, we have to go into the hybrid mode where some portion of the class will be in the class in person and the remaining will be getting it, uh, you know, uh, telecasted into their rooms. Yeah. Because in the class, you cannot have more than 20 or 30 students for social distancing, those kind of things. The other part is in-person class, which we are already, uh, you know, experts at. I've been doing for quite some time by now. Okay. Now, uh, our faculty is also going online, uh, translating their courses, what uh, magic can still be created online. 
because there are certain things which are quite powerful as a technology and there are certain things that uh, we still have to create to have the peer discussion, to have the Marvel universe going, which means that team interaction has to be there. Okay, so we have to figure out ways to do this. And please understand this. This is a situation which is going to stay. Let's say this online classes are not going to stay for the whole of your two years, nor would the hybrid class will be staying for the whole of two years of your course. A portion of your two years will be through online, a portion of your hybrid classes will be going through, uh, a portion of your learning will go through hybrid classes, and the remaining will have to be in person. Now, please be mindful of this. We are not, I repeat, we are not making any compromise on the content or on the depth or the scholarship of news. Okay. Now, uh, the academic calendar, if you have noticed, it's similar to what we had done in the past for the earlier years. We have not made any compromise on the academic calendar. But these are operational questions. I would prefer the operational questions to be just mailed so that we can reply back to your operational answers. But coming back to this COVID thing, I mean, from the industry, from our alumni, is it like this batch when they go out, when they come out, uh, you know, come off age, which means when they graduate, are you going to see them differently? Do you expect something more from them or uh, you are just being uh, you know, empathetic to them or what, what is going to be your behavior? So may I add something from my own personal experience? Yes. Um, okay, like I said, 25 years and like they say normally that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but this old dog is trying to learn. So, <laughs> so I used to be, to be very frank with you, I used to be completely, uh, you know, wary of this whole concept of uh, video conferencing and online meetings. It's not never very comfortable, you know, meeting with somebody or talking to somebody online. These last three months have really brought that whole entire transformation in me. I think what this batch is going to come out is they're going to become masters at the etiquettes and the uh, methods of doing this and the most efficient ways of conducting meetings online. And these online meetings are something which are going to stay for a very long time for two simple reasons. One, of course, uh, let's say everything goes well and we get the vaccine and we are allowed to do on, uh, offline meetings too. But the fact of the matter is that companies that have now looked at costs in terms of transporting people just for our meeting and getting them back are not going to be spending that money again. If they're seeing the savings, they're going to prefer online meetings. And there's one skill which this batch will very clearly have that the other batches have taken their own time to learn. And this batch is going to be, you know, on it. So there's a very critical strength that they will bring to the table. So it's not just, you know, that it has to be looked at in a negative way. It's also in a very positive way. The second thing that I see that these batches, the strength that this batch can uh, bring to the table is that, not, that when you're looking at uh, spending a whole lot of time on your computer, as opposed to spending time, at least in my city, in Bombay, wasting a lot of time on the road, as I call it, you definitely learn to become far, far more productive than what we as our, you know, batches were because we had to struggle. So when we sort of, you know, got onto our jobs, the initial struggle was in terms of trying to figure out how to get ourselves transported to the office and back in a particular amount of time. All of that bit, work from home has taught us that productivity can definitely shoot up. But I'm not saying, see, uh, I think I'm able to produce more if not on a very bad day at least what i would normally reduce again so the productive if you're far more equipped in the online ways of working you probably where you need to go to the office every day half of you just might see a situation where the office says okay yeah, we'll here since that way to work in terms of uh, you know in the go the Okay, if I'm in that way. Thank you, Anurag. Uh, uh, Alakya, anything, anything to comment uh, or add on to what uh, Anurag said? Yeah, I think he covered a lot of very good points. I mean, all of that are true. Um, I think even if you look at it now in the in the COVID scenario and while we are in the midst of it, there are at least three industries for which this is turning out to be a boon. 
uh one is your ott industry your streaming platforms which is your netflix amazon prime etc the second is online gaming like pubg etc and the third is the edtech sector like an academies and upgrad sector so while everybody else is stumbling these their valuations are soaring so the question really and the point that i'm really wanting to make here is that a crisis is an opportunity to differentiate yourself to create your narrative differently don't look at it as a time that you are being victimized take this opportunity and create a narrative where you take advantage of what's happening around you i mean either you uh, you perish or you pivot so choose to pivot you are at the right place you are investing in yourself at a time which is i mean the best time to invest in yourself was perhaps now use the two years to really come out of it and make a narrative of how you made the best of what was available in a post covid world or in the, in the hashtag new normal like we say it so i don't think we're going to see the batch differently uh, but we but if there are some success stories or if people have used this time to actually spin and create success stories out of it and differentiation out of it those guys will be the winners in the long term that's what i will say I, uh, yes please i mean great points i i was learning myself that you know <laughs> as well what i listening to both of them on productivity yeah on productivity on on you know turning challenges into opportunities and i think if i reflect back to what has changed in myself and my coworkers in the last 3 months and and this is some a comment i was you know having uh, and, and and i'm happy to listen to aditi and anurag sir as well on this i think we have become extremely more honest in our conversations with each other right with way more honest than we were earlier and and the way i look at the 2022 batch i think because they will um, go beyond their own limits much i think uh, we had the luxury of having that cushion if i may use the word of you know 400 students around us 400 of our batchmates and the seniors as a sounding board and our professors in person and and and, and in whatever capacity and i i pray to god that the 100% of the course going ahead is going to be on campus but if they have to challenge the face the challenge of remote learning etc i know they will be raising themselves way above what they were going to just put themselves in normal times so i believe they will have become way more honest versions than what we were when we were student managers we just joined the industry um in my capacity i look forward to welcoming them into the industry in 2022 as as a way more honest version of what i was back in 2010 yeah so so uh, and and, and productive and, and and the ones who are who are going to be way more capable than i was back in 2010 to turn challenges into opportunities to aditi and anurag sir's point yeah that's wonderful news actually okay and it uh, yeah. you know keeps us in good stead that uh, we are doing the right things and we should keep doing all the good things that is to be there uh, to be done uh, dr minalin i'm getting too many questions on uh, i think uh, Uh, it looks like a lot of students are kind of a little concerned about uh, you know this uh, orientation about uh, this online orientation about the classes how are they going to do that and what is the kind of learning they would be having or any pre read they should be having before orientation when is the orientation starting so these are all operational questions all right but i think uh, the uh, the immediate is more concerning for uh, a lot of students than the short term future so can you give a very quick reply in a few lines uh, what is it we intend to do i can answer this but you are the better person to answer because i always run to you whenever i am in trouble okay so go ahead and answer these questions and i need to hear something from you well i'll say um, they need not to worry about it because we are more uh, concerned that come what may whatever is the platform we are not going to have any compromise on learning the platform is immaterial there's a concern that can, i'm sorry yeah. uh, there's a concern that uh, the initially the uh, for about a month we had this uh, orientation foundation now we have reduced it to about 15 days, 15 so, days. Yeah. yes yes so they have a concern over that so is the learning going to get compromised by doing so no uh, so answer is no uh we have thought of many uh, new things now as you are aware uh we are soon going to release uh, give you some of uh, the access to some of the online courses as well uh, so that and it's voluntary so you are prepared for uh, general of principles of management certain things which you can uh, again upskill yourself your foundation is going to be of course for 17 days roughly about from 1st of august you will be joining the campus most probably in in person but if not then even in online situations uh, your classes will be 
either online or blended mode or in person. As Dr. Patnaik said, we are not yet sure what AICT is going to direct us. We are abiding uh, by that. Your <coughs> courses and whatever courses were specified in uh, foundation will happen. Really not to worry. In fact, we are planning to give you much more. So soon, uh, I assume within a week or uh, 10, 15 days time, you will receive uh, your Coursera uh, access and we'll suggest you some of the courses there. You can go through those courses, those videos, which will again will be beyond the foundation. Those are suggested ones. If you have time, if you have bandwidth, if you have scope, please go through that. Once you are back in campus again, we'll take full responsibility of it. We are even thinking of how can we increase the group learnings and uh, creating the virtual uh, meeting rooms for you so that you can discuss your cases, you can have your uh, team uh, spirit and everything going, and you will have access to all the faculty. Okay. So, question like uh, uh, some say that it's almost like losing a human touch. Okay. So let me be very honest with you guys. Uh, these classes are going to more be- More than you are losing it, right? We're missing right. it. <laughs> so we, we are missing it more than you, that's there. Uh, but uh, this human touch is something like this. Uh, these are the classes which are not asynchronous classes. It's not a class which these is will recorded be and given. These are all synchronous classes, which means it's a live class happening where I can hear you, see you. Maybe I'm not hugging you, but electronically, yes, I'm also <laughs> hugging you. So the human touch is very much there. It's not going to go over. Okay. So you will re you, raise uh, your hand. You will raise your hand when you want to hug. Yeah. <laughs> you raise, raise your hand, not electronically. You raise your hand like this. Yeah. That's even better. So I need to see all yeah. the students. I need to see who I'm speaking to. It's wonderful to have them in the class. But uh, in the absence of that kind of a luxury, what's the next best thing? Okay, so we are trying to make the most of it, and we don't want to make compromises on things. Vijay Lakshmi, are you still on with us? Can you hear us? Can, can, I, can you hear us? Can I make? Uh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Can you hear us? Can I make one comment? Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Alakya, please, please go on. Alakya, please. Yeah. 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 yeah, one comment to address this uh, lack of human touch. If if I may help by making one comment here, uh, it's not just you. The entire world is lacking a human touch right now, right? I'll, I'll make one comment from a very uh, favorite junior of mine, Mr. Rahul Subramaniam. I'm sure you, uh, he's the 2011 batch uh, pass out. I'm sure you know about him, uh, who he is. Uh, and, and we were chatting a few days back on something and he was saying, Hamare business mein hi wahi hai. he's a stand-up comic for the ones who don't know, that human touch, the response, not having that... Uh, I can't even tell you what a day like is. And, and imagine someone like him. So it's not just you. So the moment you accept that, that it's not just me who is going through this while I'm entering the MB experience of, of this need for human touch, please understand it's true for the entire humanity, not just you, not just the MBA fraternity, the entire world right now. All of us in our own capacities, in our own ecosystems are trying to adapt and and, and um, survival of the fittest, like uh, Milanini ma'am mentioned in the beginning. So, the, so that is now possibly more relevant in human history than ever before for all of us, in, even in the ones who are entering the MBA ecosystem like all of you. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Vijay Lakshmi, uh, can, you, can you speak or we cannot hear you? Oh, okay, so electronically it's a failure today. A uh, bad day for you, Vijay Lakshmi. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, we are out of time. So what we'll do is uh, any further questions, please mail us. We'll try to answer them. Okay. Uh, we don't want any um, any question to go unanswered. Please mail us. We'll try to answer each one of them. And uh, what I have to say here is today we saw, we shared all of our worries, all of our demons, all of our imagination of an uncertain world. But what is absolutely certain is we should, and we have the resilience, we have the determination to actually meet it. And I'm certain this batch is going to be a lot more successful than the normal ones and a lot more resilient in having a career. So I wish, I, I wish each participant, each one of this batch to have a wonderful career and success. And thanks a lot, Aditi, Alakya, and Anurag for making it and sharing your experience with our students. And I'm saying our students because I almost there. I yearn for that human touch. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Miralini, for uh, your wonderful start session. But somehow the slides didn't change. Somehow technology again. Uh, 
we have to take it in our stride and move on always. So that's okay. And uh, I didn't realize that the slides did not change because I was changing so, it here. So if, if some, <laughs> yeah, so if some students later want it, we can always share that with them so that they can go through oh, that. Yes. So, okay. So thank you all so much. And uh, we're stopping here. Uh, and uh, you have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your day. Have fun. Great learning. And make it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.